In this exercise, we're going to talk about how you can get rid of constant noise, background noise, like electric hum, or let's say a hiss that you would hear here, or motor noise, or fan noise, or vinyl record scratches, something that goes through an entire segment or through an entire clip. To follow along, go get the Noises Speech WAV file inside the Working Files Noises subfolder right there. You can also work with the music version of this one, but working with the speech ones is a little bit tougher. It's a little bit harder to remove noises where you've got discrete sounds like speech as opposed to music, which can be kind of a constant flow. So we're going to work with the speeches one here and just see how that works. We're going to start off with this hum here. Now, we need to take a closer look at it, because if you take a close look at it, there are multiple approaches that you might want to use to remove the hum. So first of all, I'm going to zoom in by just right-clicking here in this segment and zoom in on that segment so you can see just that clip or just that part of the clip. And there's the hum down there. And I'd like to take a closer look at it to see what frequencies are involved. So I'm going to right-click here in this vertical ruler and just look at that segment. And there are those frequencies. And we're seeing them in a discrete fashion like this, so kind of very narrow. That's not the default view. If I right-click here, we would normally see them something like this, or I'll just do Control shift down arrow it would be Command-Shift-Down-Arrow on a Mac. And we would normally see them something like that. They would be a little bit fatter. But I've done this little Control-Shift or Command-Shift-Up arrow enough times to get to the point where it can't go any farther. And that's a much narrower view. It gives you a really clear picture of the specific frequencies involved. Now, there are a couple of approaches here. I'm going to start with the big one that probably will be least effective, but it's kind of the easiest one to do, and that is to simply identify this area, mark this area, and reduce its volume. And the way you do that is by creating a marquee around it. One of the cool things about working in the frequency display, the spectral frequency display, is that you can use these tools up here to select areas of the audio. So I'm going to click on this marquee selection tool. If you work with Photoshop, you're going, oh, I've seen this in Photoshop. It works with images and graphics. Well, here we are working with audio with it. And I'm going to make a marquee around this hum. The way you do that is by clicking above and to the right of it or above it over here, whichever way you want to do it, or right at the bottom like this, and then starting to drag. And then you can drag a marquee around it. Now, I've made it kind of large. You can narrow it down after you've created it simply by hovering your cursor over the bottom or the top or the side. And you can pull it in. So I'm going to pull it in a bit to just not take all the base out. I just want to limit it to this area here. And here we are on top. I'll bring it down just a touch there so we can include just that area that we want to reduce the volume on it. So once we've made that selection, we can listen to it. And what we'll hear is only what's inside the selection. Very deep bass here. You can hear my mumbling kind of sound as I'm reciting the Gettysburg Address. Just the bass end. So if we want to get rid of the hum, we can just simply reduce the volume. And we can use the heads up display to do that. I'm just going to drag on the number here using my little scrubby control, that little finger with the double arrow there, and just pull it down. You can also rotate that little uh, circle, which is happening concurrently here as I do this. I'm going to bring it down quite a bit, let's say down 33 decibels like that. You'll see that the color will change here. It turns to a darker purple. It's not as bright. That means it is quiet. We've reduced the volume. I'll click away. And let's listen to it. Four score and seven. Listen, the hum's gone, but then... Four score and seven years. So is the bass response to my voice. So not a very effective tool in this particular circumstance. You might find circumstances where there isn't a whole lot of bass going on, but there's a lot of this bass hum. And you can just reduce the hum or just selecting this frequency range using the marquee selection tool and just dropping the volume. But that doesn't work very well here. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Control Z here on Windows, Command Z on Mac. I'm going to click away now. I'm going to use a different effect. I'm going to go to Effects, Filter and EQ, and go get the FFT filter. The FFT filter lets you pick a specific range of frequencies or individual frequencies and reduce their volume if you want to call it that so we'll go to default and i'm going to select the area that i want to reduce i'm looking over here and i'm seeing that from about 200 or so down to about 60. i'm going to zoom in a little bit on that just to be more specific i can see that i can go from about oh let's say 210 down to 60. so i'm going to click right about 210 there and right about 60 over here and then i'm going to drag this down by creating another point there and pulling it down and that should get rid of a lot of the hum, but it'll probably also get rid of a lot of the bass response in my voice, too. But let's just listen to that. Four score and... Didn't get rid of all the hum, so I'm going to pull this to the right just a little bit, and pull this to the left just a little bit. Try that. Four score and seven years ago. So you can see that it gets rid of the preponderance of the hum, but again, 
it also gets rid of the base response. So it may not be a very effective effect to use in this particular circumstance. But again, this is an option if you want to get rid of you know, a segment of uh, frequency ranges. I'll close that down. And now we'll go to the guy that really is going to be the winner. Go to Effects, Filter and EQ, and go to the Notch Filter. The Notch Filter lets you pick specific frequencies. So I'm going to start at the default setting. I'm going to start pulling some frequencies down here. I'm going to try to get a closer view at those exact frequencies by zooming in on this just a little bit by pressing the plus key. There you go. Now you can see the frequencies pretty clearly. So I want to have 60 hertz. That's 60 right there. I want to bring it down quite a bit. So I'm going to pull it down, make it much quieter, like maybe down to 70 or so. And here I'm pulling down the frequencies around it. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to change this notch width to super narrow. There you go. Let's look at the next one here. The next one looks like it's about 108, something like that. So I'll just type in 108. And we'll bring that guy down too. There we go. And you can see the process I'm going through. I'm going to pick out some more here and do the rest. But I created what's called a preset. When you change things, when you create something custom like this, you can click on this little button here and give your preset a name. And then your preset will show up here inside this drop down list. So I've got one called Jeff 60 Hertz Hum. And it has all those frequencies that I identify over here. I've got 60, 108 right there. The next one, 134 right there. And I really zoomed in on this to take a closer look. And so I can see that's 134 right there. 155, 180, and 202. And I can scroll this down a bit. And there's the 202 and the 180 right there. And so I've picked these frequencies out. And now let's listen to what this guy sounds like. I'll zoom out a little bit by pressing the backslash key. There we go, and I will listen to just this segment right here. Let me also zoom out vertically like this. I'll right click and go zoom reset. And now here we go. Four score and seven years ago. I hope you're impressed by that. Wow, we got rid of all those discrete frequencies and did not get rid of the bass response using this notch filter by examining the hum closely. So wow, that just works super well. I'll play it a little bit more. Our father has brought forth on this continent. Super. So that's a great little tool there for, you know, when you can identify discrete frequencies like that, use the notch filter. Let's move on to this fella. There's hiss, and this is not discrete at all. It's just kind of this frequency, this noise goes throughout the entire band of frequencies. It's almost a constant flow. The color is almost constant from top to bottom. So how do we deal with that? Well, we get a noise print and ask the noise reduction effect to do it for us. So I'm going to open up the noise reduction effect. effect noise reduction, noise reduction effect. And it says, okay, I need to capture a noise print. So I could have done this beforehand, but it's easier to do it right here within this effect. So I'm gonna click on this tool, this time selection tool, which lets me select a time here, just like that. I'm picking this area here because it's a little bit wider than the beginning here. I wanna get an area where there's no other sound playing. You don't hear my voice at all, just to hear this little bit of noise here. And I'll demonstrate that by just playing that. Here we go. So you can hear that sound, so I'll stop that. That's where we get the noise print, and we say, yep, let's capture that noise print. Got it. Now let's select this whole area here. That's what we're going to work on trying to reduce the noise here. What I'm going to do is I'll play that, and I'll just mess with these controls here where I say, how much of the noise do I want to reduce, and then how much do I want to reduce it by? So I'll just preview a little bit and see how we do here. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Four score and seven years. So you can see we got rid of a lot of the noise, but we had that kind of metallic sort of watery sound in the background. But you can adjust things here to try to fix that. But that's the basic approach where you've got this sort of constant sound. Then you use this approach to take care of that. All right, let's move on to the next one here, which is kind of a combination of effects. I'm going to show you that you don't necessarily have to take just one approach when you're dealing with noises. You can take a couple of approaches. This one has a hum and some background noise. Four. So you can see there's a hum there. And then this is the background noise. So we'll deal with the hum first and then deal with the background noise second. So let's just use the notch filter again on the hum. I've created a preset for this to speed things up. So I'm going to go to filter and EQ, notch filter. We'll change this one over to the motor noise one. Now I have one and two. Now if I want to apply an effect twice, I would apply it on here and then apply it again. Well, I don't want to apply it on the clip. I'd rather do it on the effects rack. So let me show you how that works. I'll close this thing down, open up the effects rack, over to here now and apply it once and then apply it again. Filter and EQ, notch filter. And I'm going to go to the motor preset. I've got a motor noise one preset and then it shows these frequencies. 
152, 252, 351. It's interesting that this particular hum seems to go in 100 hertz increments. I'll zoom in on it so you can get a chance to see that. And there they are, those discrete little levels. It's 152, 252, 352, or 3, something like that. Look at that, how they're spaced out like that just because of the noise of this motor, for whatever reason, puts things out in 100 hertz increments. So I made this one notch filter, which has six notches in it, but there are more than six bands of hum here. So I'll identify part of this just by selecting it. And we'll see how this one effect works. I'll loop it, and then we'll just turn this on and off and see how it works. So now it's off, and now it's on. So it takes care of the low frequency, so this one. So I'll close that down, and it's already added. I'll add another instance of it. You can have more than one of the same effects. So I'll go back to Filter and EQ, Notch Filter, and I'll take the second preset that I made called Motor Noise 2, and this is a higher set of frequencies up above here. See, I started 650, 750, 850. It is interesting how that works. There's 650 right there, 750, kind of a light one, 850, 950, right around there. And now I'll remove the high end of those frequencies. And these two things together, let's see how they sound. I'm going to turn off the whole effect. If I click on this button here, it turns off both at once so you can see the before and after. That's before, after. So you got rid of a lot. So now we've taken care of the discrete frequencies with the notch filters applied twice. Let's go on to the noise reduction. Go to effects. Noise reduction right there. And we've already got this segment selected so we could do a noise print here. But I'm going to slide it over just a bit to make sure we've got only the noise. We don't have any of the leftover speech there. Capture the noise print. There we go. Let me zoom out just a little bit so we can see more of that clip. Let me slide you over a little bit so you can see it a little better. One more notch back. There we go. There's the whole clip right there. And I'm going to apply the noise reduction to that. So I'm going to loop through it and we'll try some adjustments here and see if we can fine tune this thing, knowing that we got rid of the discrete hum frequencies. Now we're going to get rid of the kind of overall background noise from the fan. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Four score and seven. I mean, I hope you're going, wow. I mean, that sound is gone. The background noise is gone. The hums are gone. And we've got a pretty good sounding speech. Obviously, it's been affected by all the noises that have been taken out. But that's reasonably good, I think. Than years ago. You can kind of hear that bass rumble a little bit here and there. But applying two effects really helped deal with that. I'll close this thing down. Let's move on to the one last one, which is also a two effect approach. But I'm just going to take the first effect this time and deal with the discrete reduction of individual sounds in the next tutorial. This is a vinyl scratch. Vinyl scratch is from a record. Four score and... So we'll take the same approach here. We're going to take care of the background noise first. And then in the next tutorial, we'll talk about dealing with specific sounds, these specific scratches. So the way we do that is, again, just by using the noise reduction effect, I'll select this area at the end here, which is easier to grab a bigger chunk. Go to Effects, Noise Reduction Restoration. Noise reduction will capture the noise print there. There it is. And now I'll select more of the clip so we can hear the whole thing. Now the noise at the end might be different than the noise at the beginning, so we'll see if that really helps or not. We'll play it and I'll make some adjustments here. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. So you can see we got rid of all the overall vinyl scratches, but there's still little clicks and pops. And we'll deal with the clicks and pops next time around. But we definitely took care of the background stuff first, which is really the approach you need to take when you got a bunch of little clicks and pops mixed in with the static. So that's how you deal with background sounds, constant sounds, sounds that run through an entire clip or an entire segment. You just have to sort of analyze what's your approach going to be. It can be one effect or more than one effect, or the application of the same effect more than once to get rid of those overall background sounds.